So what we're going to do right now is basically ask ourselves the question of what happens when one world meets another world, when one system meets another system, right? And in the previous three videos, we spent like 40 minutes, uh, you know, defining our terms, uh, explaining what units were, and units are basically anything you want them to be, right? Uh, we talked about what fractions were, defining what fractions were, which is basically talking about parts of a whole, and we talked about what ratios were, which is basically comparing one thing to another thing. And that's what we've done in the last 40 minutes, or in the last three videos and if you want to you know get deeper information more info about this stuff look at those three videos what we're gonna do right now is take that information and seriously ask ourselves what happens when one world meets another world what happens when one system meets another system So what we're asking ourselves is, what happens when this system wants to communicate with this system, wants to trade with this system, right? Now, what we're going to do is we're not going to look at specific different systems because there's, there's so many of them, right? There's so many different disciplines. So what we're going to do is talk about colored squares and triangles, talk about the scale system that we set up in the previous two videos, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to call this the world of colored triangles and we're going to call this the world of colored squares. And we're going to learn how to communicate, how to convert from one unit, one system to another system. Hey. So what you want to be able to do now is ask yourself, what happens when this world wants to trade with this world? What happens when this world wants to communicate with this world, right? And this occurs in, uh, in so many different realms, in so many different worlds, in so many different systems, right? I mean, Rosetta Stone historically translating between three different languages gave us the key to be able to read all these languages, all this information that we had in the past, right? This happens in programming languages. One, uh, you know, I'm not a programmer, I'm not a software engineer. I think it's called a kernel or a, a compiler or something like this when one thing wants to communicate to another thing, right? So it's just a pointer, it's just a link, it's just a key. It's sort of an anchor point from one system to another system. And for us, for this system that we set up previously in the last two videos, we agreed that two blue boxes was going to be equal to three blue triangles. And that's going to be our connection, our link between one system to another system. And as long as we know how the triangles are related to each other, and that we know, we already set that up, and as long as we know how the boxes are related to each other, then we can go from anywhere from this system to anywhere from this system, okay? Now, in mathematics, there's a couple of different ways we can represent this. We can represent this with two, two dots setting, setting up a ratio like this, or we can set it up as basically a fraction. So basically there's two different ways we can represent this communication between these two realms, right? We can write it out with two dots like that, or we can write it out as a, as a fraction down here. They mean the same thing, but in general, when you're doing the mathematics, when you're doing your number crunching, you never, well, I've never done it with the dots happening here, okay? The way I, the way you end up crunching the numbers in mathematics, because those are all the axioms, all the rules you've learned, right? We use basically the fraction form in this form. And I'm going to show you in the next video how you can translate this into this bottom part and go ahead and do your calculations. Now, the simplest way that you can think about of how this relates to you is if you, if you picture yourself belonging in one of these systems, right? If you picture yourself being the system, what you know being part of the system, then if you ever want to break out of your shell, if you ever want to go beyond your programming, if you ever want to learn something that you don't, you may not know something about, or something you come across that you want to be able to understand, then you're going to have to be able to do unit conversion. You have to be able to do this conversion. You're going to have to be able to figure out what something is worth to you in another system based on what you know in your own world, right? In your own mindset. And that's the way you can grow and incorporate other systems within your system. And this is just example of one simple, simple conversion from one system to another system. What you have to consider is, if this is your world, right, if you want to start communicating to other systems, and there are many other systems out there, right, so what happens is, this is just one link 
there are multiple other links out there. So there are multiple other worlds out there that you want to be able to communicate to, right? And as long as you know how to move around your own world, your own system, as soon as you learn how to be able to convert what something is worth to you in another system, in another world, then you've incorporated that world within your world and you've learned more. You've gone beyond your programming. You've, you've gone beyond your shell, right? And once you're able to, you know, start using this, part of this becomes part of you in this world and you can go to the worlds that that system might be connected to okay and that's the beauty of mathematics because that's what math is about math is about connecting the dots helping you to move around right helping you to understand what's going on helping you to to be able to to work with other systems okay and one thing you should keep in mind is each one of these systems is not just uh, some abstract system that is, that, is, that is rigid, right? Each one of these systems, each one of these boxes, triangles, circles, whatever you want to think about them is, they're functions, right? They're based on certain variables, certain, certain laws, certain rules, certain whatever it is, right? So each one of these things, the ratios that we set up do not necessarily just have to be some abstract rigid numbers because most of them in general will be functions will be based on something right if you take two dollars and buy three apples there's a whole economics behind your money right so that's just not two dollars right that's two things that are worth something based on a certain society right that's not just three apples or three watermelons or three books right what that is is a whole system that created that product, right? So these things are really functions. And you should always, in general, think about what the functions are, what the variables are that are generating whatever these numbers are, right? Whatever the worth we're giving them, right? Whatever the units is that we're giving them, okay? So what we'll do in the next video is basically learn how we do the simple unit conversion from one system to another, and we'll slowly make our way to more complicated uh, conversions where, you know, we have to lay things in one line and do multiple things in one shot, okay? And um, to finish this off, we'll get into some examples and look at some specific systems that, you know, exist in the real world that uh, we can do some, uh, take some examples from okay uh that's it for now i'll see you guys in the next video